smt nation we back nation big network update out of t-mobile this one actually quite complicated uh let me go ahead and kind of show you guys what nikki t over on twitter x uh, shared with me i think he tagged me on this maybe uh but this is actually a post original post on reddit uh this is a location i believe that's in new jersey i forget the name of the city but this is a, a newly modernized site for T-Mobile. It looks like this has probably been climbed a couple of times. So here on the right are the lower frequencies for T-Mobile. All right, so we're talking about like N71, N25, you know, all the, the AWS LTE, the band to all the different radios for the lower frequencies. And um, then you have these three radio antennas. You know, those are the integrated radio antennas. Looks like Ericsson gear. Uh, and that's where things get really interesting. The one you see the larger square panel, all right, that one. Uh, so this is one, two, three, four from the right. <laughs> that is N41. That's your 2500 megahertz frequency. And then you see these two on the left for T-Mobile. That's new. We don't often see those. The one on the left, all the way, the first one on the left. That's the 3450 DOD. And then the one that's sandwiched between the N41 and the DoD, the 3450, that's N77's 3700 frequency. That is a lot of radio gear, folks. That is a lot. And uh, <laughs> T-Mobile's got a lot of frequencies, right? And now you guys can see why they're kind of rushing to do the whole standalone 5G thing because they've got a ton of frequencies that they want to start aggregating. Now, those are kind of the key points of this video, right? 2.5 gigahertz, their N41, basically the foundation of their 5G UC connection. Now, with this particular site, you know, I'm not talking about scale here, but this particular site, possibly a test site, possibly a sign of things to come, includes both parts of N77, the 3.45 and the 3.7. Now, the thing about 3.7 is they only have it in certain places, right? Some of the larger PAs. They've got it in a very limited capacity and they don't have much of it they've got a little bit of the c block that's it so it's more supplemental for them i don't know whether they have like 40 megahertz of it or something like that because verizon's got the bulk of it and then at&t's got a nice chunk as well you know so that puts them you know just a little bit in some places the 3.45 is interesting too because they average 21 megahertz of it across the country i think in like 180 million pops of the u.s which kind of also puts it in you know a, a decent amount of the country i don't know that's like half the pops or something like that okay so i i wanted to lay that out there and if you guys remember this was a subject of conversation at a i wouldn't say a recent I think it was last year it was like an earnings call like a q4 earnings so this was like nine ten months ago and they were, and, and T-Mobile was asked about the 3.45 auction and what they're going to do, how they're going to be upgrading, you know, when are they going to build this and stuff like that. And, you know, T-Mobile made it very clear that they were looking for a one and done, you know, kind of like what AT&T has called the one touch, which really hasn't been that, uh, but it's putting up a single antenna radio combo that does both frequencies of N77, the 3.45 and the 3.7. So this, this kind of throws a wrench into the woodworks, folks. This is not an all-in-one solution. This is not the two-for-one. This is not. This is two separate antenna radio combos for the N77 piece, which has two sub-pieces. Well, at least for T-Mobile, not for Verizon. This is basically the same thing we saw with AT&T, putting up radio gear for both of the frequencies that are in N77. Okay, so... It's too late to talk about how the FCC messed up the frequencies and the bands, All right? That, that has come and gone. That ship has sailed. But when I'm looking at this setup and I'm looking at what T-Mobile is doing here, this kind of indicates what we didn't think was going to happen. Because the thing is, folks, if you got 40 megahertz of C-band, the, the, the 3700, and 20 megahertz of DoD, I know in some places I think they have 30 or 40. I don't know. It depends on the market they don't need two antenna radios this is probably just out of obligation you know they they don't have a solution from ericsson in this case that can give them a two-in-one that's the situation right it's a 
it's an infrastructure thing, right? Or excuse me, it's um, it's an OEM vendor restriction here. They just don't have it yet. They probably haven't scaled it. Maybe it's in development. You, you know, maybe they've got the patents and they just have to manufacture and scale and provide supply. But this is a pretty big update. So clearly, <laughs> you know, T-Mobile needs it in some places. There's a reason why they have those licenses. This is an interesting one that we're going to follow up on, but this is a big update. Again, this is, um, I forget where, but it's happening in, in New Jersey, and we'll offer more updates as we get more information. Stay tuned from the SMT. We'll provide those updates at that time. Thanks for watching, folks. Comment down below uh, if you want to support the channel and the content we're creating here. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.